focus on you as doing your wanting to do more speaking, right? When you go on stage as a speaker, your mindset should be, I am a closer. So Landon, if you're gonna be doing the Christmas thing along with her and then you, you're, you are a closer. How good of a closer are you? How well can you convert the sale? Which means you need to figure out what the closes are. You're gonna hear me talk about in the challenge next week that you have to learn to destroy beliefs that are not conducive to people purchasing. They're not just objections, they're beliefs. And you will see how I work on destroying people's beliefs because it's what, what's the two beliefs that you're going to get when you have your funnel? Time and money, time and money, time and money. So people, some people do, do you realize that if you're 40 years old, you only have maybe about 42 summers or Christmases left in your life? Do you realize that? So now they're thinking, you're getting them to take action. All these little things that you do, um, money. So how many of you know that you didn't want to buy something but you did like an iPhone or a smartphone for a thousand dollars. I mean, come on, right? So you, you're doing things, so in your presentation, so we start off and I'll, I'll tell you because we're behind the scenes. So you'll hear me say on Monday, the first thing I'm going to say, there's always the elephant in the room. You must deal with this. The elephant in the room, anytime somebody goes to an event, is what are you going to sell me, yeah. right? So I deal with the elephant in the room. The first elephant in the room that I deal with, that looks like um, Mike Tyson's grandfather. Our father. Hey guys. Um, Good. We're actually closed on the dock for now for, for a private event. Um, so, where was I? Darn it. Talk to me, Gary. Elephant in the room. Elephant in the room is price. So I say, so how many of you think I'm going to try to sell you something today? They put their hands up. Trust me, I will not let you down. <laughs> then they laugh. Funny as money. So I've, I've gotten the elephant out of the room. You make sense? All right. So now they're out of the room. That's good. So they know you're going to sell me something. So that's, so we do that literally in the first, oh my gosh, that's the first 15 minutes of our program. So when you start doing yours, that's, that's you're, you want to let them know, yeah, I'm going to offer you something. And here's the thing, when you do these funnels, the higher the price, not always, sometimes the longer it should be, but the reason you do two hours at a time is because you go home now and they chew on this stuff. And now they're, they're nudging the husband and they're nudging the wife and they go, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. And their brains are thinking and their brains are going and then they're starting to like you more and they're liking you more and they're liking you more. Then you come back to the next day and the next day and the next day. And then when it comes at the end, if you do it right, there's no hard close. It's either you like it or you don't. That's it, you've, you've dealt with all the objections. So one of the things that you're gonna see me do, you're gonna see me pull out 30 credit cards that I've used for the last 30 years. I've saved all my credit cards. I actually pull out my American Express bill. It's 40 to $50,000. I let them see to let them know to invest in themselves. And I say to them, I don't care what the credit card interest is. You know why? And I'm sure it's loan sharking between 18 and 26%. All I focus on is the return. So now you're, 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 so you've got to figure out what do you think the objections are going to be. Now, if you're dealing with the people who are already doing the, you know, HVAC and the yard stuff, they get that. So you don't have to convince them as much as you do mom and dad who have a nine to five job. So it's a little, so, so the, the, the way of convincing them would be different. So in this case, if your niche is going to be those people who are already doing landscaping and so forth, you, you know, you'll say something like, you know, you, you know, wintertime starts coming, what happens to your business? It dries up. You get a little scared sometimes because you don't know, you know, what the beginning of your cycle is going to be in January or February. And you already have the process, you already have the people, you already have the flow. You're just missing a couple strategies on how this is done, blah, blah, whatever. But, and then the thing is, well, I don't have the time. Well, I already have my landscaping business. So that's how you deal with it. So your skill is going to, and I'm, during the week, I'm going to share with you different books that you'll want to buy and invest. I read two to four books a month. I'm constantly learning. I, I have a section in my computer under my notes where anything that I like that works, is, that it looks, looks good, that I jot it down. And before every one of these events, I go through every, and I read it over and over. Here's one I just learned. And I learned this for somebody that says, um, you know, but I like, I want to be a speaker, I want to be a baker, I want to be this, and I want to be a this. And I say to them, Bruce Lee says, he fear not the man who has done 10,000 kicks once, but the man who's done one kick 10,000 times. 
I like that quote, and I wrote it down, and I learned it over and over and over and over and over. And then I have them all, and I learn them over and over and over. So what happens is, is when you speak and say things like this, you come across even more so as a, an authority. And that's what you want. So when you're saying stuff like this, you, you feel it, you know, it's just like, you know, like neuroscientists say, you want, I want to, and, and, and this, this is something that I will say in the program typically, to let people know, I'm looking for people who are all in, right? So I want to teach you the, where I'm talking to people. I want, I want to teach you how to be a master. You've got to learn to master this. So that means when you get started, kind of in lieu of what you said, it takes not just one season, two season, three seasons. You don't want to say that too much because they're thinking I'm stuck here for five years. But you want them to know you're learning a new career here. Bottom line, you're learning a new career. Newer scientists say to be a master at something, it's about three hours a day, 20 hours a week, and 10 years. So when you look at myself and my wife, we're doing multiple six figures, we have put our time in. So we're gonna take all of that, so you've already told them that this is, you're gonna have to put some time in, and then we're gonna condense all the years that we've been doing this and all the skills, and we're gonna hand it to you in, in, a, in a silver platter. Yeah. You see, see what I'm, see what I'm doing. But when you're, when you're borrowing quotes, but that takes discipline. When you see a quote, well, I got the discipline. I write it down. I, I, just for the heck of it, I'm going to read some of them to you, just so because it's so important to make sure you come across like you friggin' know what you're doing. I do. Remember that, we yes. With Tony Robbins, and um, so we worked with Tony one on one for a week, and then ongoing after that, okay. We to several of his conferences, etc. And we had a personal coach through him, right? Blah, blah, blah. But one of the things Tony says often, and no matter where he appears, he will say this at some point. He said people underestimate, you know, what they can do. Uh, or people overestimate what they can do in a day, a month, a year, but yes. they underestimate what they can do in ten years. Yes. And because of that, they get stuck right here in this one so, week, one month. You want do you have a picture with him huh? or video with him? Oh yeah. I'll, okay. I'm sure. So yeah. Video, uh, we we want to use that, but we don't want to say what it was for because you're not in the marriage anymore, right? So it didn't work. So then they're going to be thinking, well, right. okay. So. I had the opportunity to work personally one on one with Tony because you know, he's, he's now, you know, he's, he's a household name now. Right. Dad is going to give you authority. And here's one thing he told me, and you've probably heard it before. And then, so these these are the things that that is what I would put down on my notes. So I've got I got here. It's, well, I was, and I was singing in the Olympics. Right? Yeah, and that's the that these things that she doesn't like to do. What's that? About 20, 15, 20 minutes. The we're going to get on this boat. Okay. So if there's bathrooms and everything over there, bars, bathrooms, restaurants. No. But in okay. case you want to do it beforehand. Okay. okay. No problem. There's Just giving there. you guys a But using some warning. of that clout she has as authority when you're saying that, she should, cause she's got a lot. You got to use it. 100%. Right. I mean, even some of the popular, hey, the, this person, whoever, Taylor Smith, did the around her three times. So, you know, Doing what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have pictures. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Right. This is so good. For what? For what? Tell me. We did um, we did the award show for George Strait getting inducted into the yes. Hall of Fame. So I was, Loretta Lynn, I was sitting right? yeah. in the seat in front of Taylor next yeah. to John, next to Faith Hill, Nicole Kidman, Keith Urban. Okay, these things you want to jot down. These are things where somehow.